Hello everyone and welcome to Crash Course Medicine. This is Emily speaking and today I'm going to be talking about failure to thrive in the paediatric specialist area section. To begin with, let's ask a few questions to see what level our base knowledge is at. So, question one. What is failure to thrive? Is it A, less than expected growth over the first year? B, less than expected growth over the first two years? C, less than expected growth over the first three years? and D, less than expected growth over the first four years. When do you think baby's growth would be considered extremely important to measure? The answer is C, less than expected growth over the first three years. Normally failure to thrive is measured within the first three years, but it can be diagnosed earlier. Question two, what is the most common cause of FTT? A, environmental factors. B. Inadequate intake, C. Social factors, or D. Chronic disease. There are many causes of FTT. Which of the below do you think is the most common? The answer is B. Inadequate intake. Question 3. What, according to the Waterloo criteria, is severe FTT? A. 80 to 90 percent median. B less than 70% median, C, 70 to 80% median, or D, 90 to 100% median? The answer is B, less than 70% median. So today we're going to be talking about failure to thrive. What are the symptoms, the risk factors and history, investigations and differential diagnosis, clinical examination and OSCE tips and treatment? And what is failure to thrive? <laughs> then we're going to go back over the questions I've just asked to see what we've learned in the session today. So what is failure to thrive? FTT is a descriptive term and refers to less than expected growth over time during the first three years of life when tracked on a growth chart. The definition varies between healthcare providers as both medical and psychosocial problems may be present and so the condition requires a comprehensive evaluation. The most common cause is inadequate intake. The child does not consume enough calories and other nutrients to support growth. Contributor, contributors to this include environmental factors, so poor access to healthy food, social family factors, lack of knowledge regarding age appropriate food, household chaos, poor care of feeding skills, child abuse and neglect, poor appetite, so chronic fever, chronic infections and anemia can all lead to this, feeding problems, so patients with cerebral palsy, cleft lip or gourd, and catch-up growth, so prematurity. Symptoms. Symptoms may include faltering growth, signs of malnutrition, poor social history, poor quantity of food or fluid intake, abnormal feeding behaviour, and perinatal complications. Risk factors. Small for gestational age, GI problems such as reflux or celiac disease, poor care and knowledge, poor care-child interaction, cerebral palsy, cystic fibrosis and prematurity. Let's take a look at a history and see if we can pick out some of the key features. A seven-month-old boy presents with a weight for length markedly below the fifth percentile. The child appears listless with poor hygiene and marked buttock folds of skin from a loss of muscle mass and subcutaneous tissue. His single teenage mother has been living with a friend. The family has been lost to follow up since the two month checkup when concerns about parenting were noted. Efforts by a home nursing agency had failed to contact the mother. She brought her baby to the clinic because her grandmother kept nagging that he didn't look right. What kinds of things do we need to ask in a paediatric history? You need to ask about the birth history, were there any problems during pregnancy or during labour, feeding nutrition, stooling and voiding, growth pattern, recurrent infections, hospitalizations, HIV risk factors, developmental history, social and family history, and review of symptoms. Investigations. If you see a patient that seems as though they have failure to thrive, you should take a full blood count to test for anemia. You should also do an urine analysis to investigate for presence of a UTI. Differential diagnosis. The baby may just be small, but healthy, 
which in which case no investigations are needed. Small for gestational age, as above. Prematurity should be plotted on appropriate growth chart. Cystic fibrosis or cerebral palsy. Clinical examination. Weight, height and head circumference should all be measured. Fat stores should be noted in buttocks, thighs and neck. Any dysmorphic features should be noted. Neurological signs such as tone should be noted. Developmental milestones. CVS, RASP and ABDO is check. Any signs of neglect such as a flat head, poor hygiene, bruises or abrasions. OSCE tips. You should approach the OSCE with an input versus output approach. Think about what's going in versus what's coming out. So the input, nutrition, birth weight should be regained by seven to 10 days and it should be doubled by five months, tripled by a year and quadrupled by two years. Think about any problems such as feeding, swallowing dysfunction, aspiration. Is the formula mixed incorrectly? Output, too much out. Reflux is normal, but babies may increase too much or be vomiting. Diarrhea, increased metabolic demands. Are there any congenital malformations or problems? Malignancy, recurrent infections or hypothyroidism. Treatment. So observe the child for 30 seconds. Are there any concerns? Remember to test all four categories of development. Common stations are normal child. You may get asked what their developmental age is or they may lie about the child's age. Global developmental delay or asymmetrical delay. So let's go back over the questions to see what we've learned. Question one, what is failure to thrive? A, less than expected growth over the first year. B, over the first two years. C, over the first three years. Or D, over the first four years. The answer is C, over the first three years. Question two, what is the most common cause of FTT? A, environmental factors. B, inadequate intake. C, social factors. Or D, chronic disease. The answer is B, inadequate intake. Question three, what according to the Waterloo criteria is severe FTT? 80 to 90% median, less than 70% median, 70 to 80% median, or 90 to 100% median? The answer is less than 70% median. Thank you everyone, we've come to the end of the slideshow now. I hope you found it useful and have learned about FTT. Let's come back to Crash Course Medicine for more revision videos. Bye.